yes, there are some things where I'm just like, okay, that's just not happening. But other things I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a try. Let me learn about it. Let me find out what that's all about. Phoenix, you're bursting a fire burn. A thirst and desire. You transform it up in a flash. You spread your wings to rise from the ashes. Phoenix, you burst in a fire burn. A thirst and Hey, y'all. Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. I'm Sasha. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back, my Laurel Royal. So good to see you. If you are new to the fam, welcome to the family, my new Laurel Royals. So good to finally meet you. Welcome, welcome, y'all, to another video. And in today's video, I'm actually going to give you my perspective on solo travel after having taken my first solo international flight trip. So, if you are looking to solo travel outside of your country, wherever you're from, whether it be from the United States, Europe, Asia, or wherever, this is just my perspective and this is based off of my own experience as well as where I went. My first solo international trip was recently to South Korea, which I enjoyed tremendously. So here's why I think you should also consider solo traveling if you haven't already done so. So again, as a disclaimer, this is based off of my experience. These are my own personal tips. There are a bazillion different videos out there of people that give tips as far as solo traveling and all that. Take everything with a grain of salt because everybody's experience is different. So with all that said, let's get into this list. It's gonna be five things. So here we go. The first tip, do your research. <laughs> This is gonna be at the top of any and all like solo travel, no matter what or who you are. Do your research because someone can say, I wanna go visit this country or I wanna go visit that city. What good is it if you don't do any research on the city itself, the language, the culture or anything? It makes no sense to go nowhere without doing any research, especially for someone like me Take the hint, read between the lines. I have to do more research than my fellow other counterparts. Take the hint, read between the lines because my experience will differ from theirs. But at the same time, it should be a well-known fact. No matter where you go, always make sure you do research because you never know what can happen, what may not happen. And if you don't know any of the rules, regulations, or cultural differences to what you are yourself, there's going to be a problem. So regardless of anything before your trip, or even you can do it during the trip too, because you can always find things to do for researching purposes while you're on, on the trip as well. But the biggest thing is beforehand, always do research. That's the number one thing. Number two on this list, ask for help when needed. The reason I say ask for help when needed is because sometimes you could be out and, do, and about doing something and you're perfectly fine. And other times you could get lost and really need help. For example, when I was visiting Korea, I got lost the first couple of days when I was walking around, mainly because I was trying to learn the transit system. And I've taken our own trains here where I live, but it's completely different when you're in another place. But someone that is uh, known for like kind of you know, walking around and helping tourists. They came over to me, asked me where I was trying to go, and they helped me to read the subway map. And therefore I was able to actually figure out where I needed to go based on that. That was one of those, I was trying not to ask, but I was like, you know what, I really don't know. So someone else asked for me. And then after that, if I needed help with anything else while I was walking around, then I was easily able to say, you know, just kind of use my translator because I don't speak Korean as well as I used to. So most of the time I just use my translator, which was uh, Papago. That was the best translator I could use if I needed help and was unable to speak what I needed to in order to ask for help. So even if you're someone that you don't like asking for assistance, if you are that lost and you cannot find what you need, just ask. Go into a shop and ask someone because the locals are going to be your best bet for help if you really need it and you can't find it online. So 
Don't be afraid to ask for help if you really need it. That's the second thing. Ask for help when needed. The third thing kind of goes with the second a little bit, or I should say plays off of it. But this one, don't be afraid of new adventures. There are people that go places and they don't like trying new things. They don't like doing things that are adventurous or they'll say, I'd rather just stay in my own personal comfort bubble. Now, I'm not saying go so far out of your comfort bubble that it's going to make you feel, you know, like you're ready to just meet Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is don't be afraid to try something adventurous. I'll give you an example. For me, my fear, I have a fear of heights, but I kind of went out of my way in order to do something adventurous. And the adventurous thing I did, I went up in the Lotte World Tower. Yeah. <laughs> In this picture, I am actually sitting about, was it 1,483 meters above ground or something like that? No, 400, I'm sorry, 478 meters, which is about uh, 1,583 feet, if I did my math correctly. Don't quote me on that. But the me sitting on that glass, I had to legitimately crawl across it because I was so afraid going across. But I did it for the adventure, and I'm glad I did. One and done. That's all it is. One and done. Now, as far as other adventure where I will not be stepping out of my comfort zone, I have a dreaded fear of helicopters. And for the people that love to do things like go across the Grand Canyon here in the States and in uh, Arizona, I can't do a, a helicopter tour. I'm too afraid of helicopters, and me being in a helicopter means you are ready for me to meet Jesus Christ, and I'm not ready to meet him just yet. So that's what I'm saying when I mean do things and, you know, don't be afraid of adventure, but don't go so far out of your comfort zone that it takes you six feet under. Put it that way. That kind of falls into the next tip. Try things out of the ordinary. So as far as trying things out of the ordinary, for me personally, when I was in Korea, I decided instead of going to the main chain restaurants, I wanted to try a lot of the mom and pop restaurants because I like trying different things and I'm more than well aware that some of the places are not too cozy with foreigners, but you know what? Can't hurt the trap. The worst they can do is say no and turn you away. And I got to go to all the places that I wanted to try. Please don't ask me no names because I do not remember the names of any of those places. I really don't. I just know that the food was absolutely chef's kiss. That's all I know. But. Yeah, try things out of the ordinary. Try things that you wouldn't normally do if you were at home. Go places, sign up for things, do a tour, things that you wouldn't do on a normal basis. Just kind of like step into the unknown, but not too far into the unknown that you kind of step far off the cliff. But yeah, so that was my thing. My thing was just to go into the restaurants that were like mom and pop places and see what the difference was. And I found the food, in my personal opinion, actually tasted a lot better than the ones in the chain restaurants because it wasn't just being cooked in mass bulks. It was something that was cooked per order. And I really liked that a lot. So yeah, try things out of the ordinary. And this last one, I consider this last one as like something to kinda, that I feel like everybody needs to do because not to offend anyone, but there are a lot of closed minded people. So I say that to say, be willing to learn new things without bias or clouded judgment. So being willing to learn something new without a bias or clouded judgment means that you're stepping into it with an open mind and you're willing to learn about something new. You're not going to look at it and say, oh, that looks hard. I'm not going to bother with it. Or that looks disgusting. I'm not going to try it. You can't just go by looking at something. Now, when it comes to food, I want to say be careful on that only because you need to be aware of your own allergies. If you look at something and you know for a fact that it used something, there's something in there that you are allergic to, please don't try it. Don't do that. Unless you're willing to do it and you have an EpiPen that you can rescue yourself with right away, please don't do it. As far as everything else, for instance, when it comes to different culture, Looking at me, you can obviously see I'm black. 
black people have different culture than say Korean people, like when I was in Korea. So me learning about Korean culture is gonna impact me a little bit differently than being at home within my own culture. It's as simple as that. And so learning about Korean culture, I basically went into it with an open mind because I know for a fact I can't speak Korean nowhere near as well as I used to. Yes, there are some things where I'm just like, okay, that's just not happening. But other things I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a try. Let me learn about it. Let me find out what that's all about. And it's the same with any culture. I'm only using Korean as a means of an example because I was just in Korea. But the same deal would apply if I had gone somewhere in Europe or if I had gone, say, to Japan or if I had gone to uh, the Middle East, like Dubai or something like that. The biggest thing with all these tips is you're going to do research, learn about the place you're going to, and try and do something out of the ordinary. But your biggest thing, have fun. Have fun. That's gonna be your best thing. Have fun. As a solo traveler, you're gonna always have someone say, you should have waited for someone, or it's not safe because you're a girl. Things happen to men too. If someone is gonna do something ridiculous or stupid, they're gonna do it no matter how well you protect yourself, or they're gonna try. You can't stop stupid, you can't. But the thing is, again, just go for it, do it. The scariest part, I promise, if you've never solo traveled, is gonna be taking that first step. But once you do it and you dip your toes in the water of solo traveling, I guarantee it'll be something that you will stick with for the rest of your life. And with that said, that is it for this video. If you are looking forward to solo traveling, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Share it with someone else who is a solo traveler or thinking about becoming a solo traveler. Please go follow me over on Twitter at DragonPink07. Please, if you, if you are interested in travel and aviation, please subscribe to my channel as I do post travel and aviation related content on Saturdays and Mondays. So with all that said, I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.